The sages of the Talmud associate the number three to the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. They highlight the fact that Moshe is a third in his family. Aaron, Miriam, and Moshe. T Torah has three sections to it. Torah, Nevi'im, the prophets, and Ketuvim, writings. It was given in the third month, Nisan, Iyar, Sivan, and so on and so forth. But it's not a coincidence. It's not just random that so many threes are connected to the Mount Sinai experience. There's a very deep message that number three teaches us. You see, when we focus on the number one, aside for representing God, the one, when it comes to us, man, one represents ego or self. As we say, my way or the highway. That's not a healthy ingredient for society. In fact, God said to Adam, it's not healthy for Adam to be alone. I'm going to create Eve, Chava, to be with him. But number two is also not entirely healthy because number two represents conflict. It's my way or your way. It's my needs and it's your needs. There's no sense of unity there. But number three represents a common goal. It's a goal that brings us together. That one and two connect because of three, because of the glue. And that's what Torah is teaching us. Torah is teaching us that number three represents a unity that's greater than the two of us connecting. And it's a powerful message as well for marriage. You see, the Mount Sinai experience is the marriage of God and the Jewish people. And so it is between husband and wife. Husband and wife, having one way and no other is not healthy. Having the two creating conflict is also not healthy. But having three, a greater purpose, a purpose of religion, a purpose of life, of mission, of reason, is what creates the unity of a husband and wife. So if we follow through and we bring the number three into our own personal lives, it will give us the right formula of creating harmony and unity. Yes, among different people, but different people who are able to connect with a common goal. Shabbat Shalom.